Hey, welcome in the basement, guys. Hello. Hi. First of all, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, one of our colleagues, Marie, uh, she spotted you guys yesterday in a bar in Brussels at the <laughs> Monk. Yeah. yeah. That was, was nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're professionals. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you got you got to test the beer when you're in Belgium. What did you think of it? Delicious. Cool. Um, but I, I feel a bit weary today. Oh, <laughs> hence the little eyes. Like the the little eyes. eyes, yeah, I've got <laughs> little eyes. <laughs> hey, but you're here to uh, promote your new album, of course, In Dreams, coming out October 2nd. I think this is going to be a record that's going to, uh, you're going to either hate it or love it. Like, it's really, it's it's it's, it's a departure from, from the last one. Do you feel it, yeah, the same way? It's a bit different. Yeah, the last one was very guitar-y. This mm. is, you know, I guess a bit more similar to our third record. But um, I think people have either loved or hated us all the way through mm. our career, I think. But, um... That's cool. We like to provoke a reaction, a response. So you know, in the middle is not that good usually, is it? So <laughs> no, no, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, it starts off with no harm. It's five minute song. Only in the, I think in the last minute, there's something that resembles a guitar. You must have had a different approach to songwriting this time. Well, the, the last record, the way that, that that kind of developed was kind of a response to what the band went through. So I can say that the, the reason the last one was very guitar driven was because we had two new members in the band and we were trying to prove to ourselves that we were being a band so we couldn't really experiment whereas this one we kind of picked up like i said with where we left off with the third record and using keyboards and and like you hinted at there's not much guitar on there um i don't know just kind of i think it represents our tastes doesn't it russ you know yeah i think uh yeah there's you know it's um i think it's a good journey the record as well uh -huh. you know it it's, takes people on a good listen Okay, well, I like the record we've been playing. Life you like it? You said it's love or hate. I, I, well, then that's I love in the it. Middle, yeah? <laughs> I, guess I, just, I can't say I hate it. No, that's weird. I, I, I love the record, guys. We've been playing Life is a Fear, yeah. the single. We played uh, it yesterday, we played it today. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do, do your kids love or hate the album? Do they love or hate editors? Uh, I haven't got any children, so uh, my girlfriend loves it, though. She does? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and what about you, Tom? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're in. They're in. Yeah, um, on the last record, they really liked A Ton of Love. You know, so they scream that at me quite a lot. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Hey, about the new album, In Dream, there's 10 tracks on there. There's always one record, always one track that you've, that you're the most proud of, that almost like amazes you when you were writing it. You're like, did I really come up with that? Which one is that for you guys? Oh, it's a bit hard, but I mean, um, the opening track gave us the real direction on the record. Um, but, you know, uh, there's got to be moments all over the record to make it, you know, stand out. Um, there's a song called The Law which is in the middle which uh, features uh, Rachel from Slow Dive yeah. and it's the first time that we've done a duet and so that's a, that's a new thing for us um, I think all the, the goths are going to like that one <laughs> <laughs> There was one person on Instagram that um, was talking about The Back Room 10 mm -hmm. years ago your yeah. album yeah. Uh, saying that uh, it always feels like a slap in my face when I'm listening to it every morning I go to work it gives me strength what wow. kind of feeling do you want to give off with this album well that's that's it's pretty cool to hear like the back room was 10 years old recently yeah. so there was there was a few people were talking about it and saying what it meant to them so it was quite humbling mm -hmm. to hear people talk like that about mm -hmm. the things that um you know that we've made um i think similarly with this one you want to make rec records that resonate with people and kind of um i don't know linger in their kind of consciousness and i mean not just background music m music that means something to people and so to have any kind of emotional response is, is, is pretty cool, really. It's, yeah. really. it's kind of why we do it. Yeah, when it's, you know, a soundtrack to their lives, then that's uh, it makes it important, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, throughout our, you know, records, we've always had moments where people have, uh, you know, sent us emails saying that it helped them through a bad time, and that's, that's, that's nice to hear. If you could pick one album that was a soundtrack to your life at one part, which one would it be? Oh... I, I always kind of like gravitate to the records I was listening to when I was like 16, 17. Mm. So, you know, those those records were important for me as a music fan and like discovering music generally. But, you know, things like OK Computer or Radiohead, Radiohead or, um, yeah, or maybe early REM records, things that I listened to then and was really like, I don't know, I was finding myself as a sad teenager in my bedroom, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone has those images. We can yeah. relate to yeah, that. Yeah, we can all relate yeah. to that. Um, Tom and Russell from Editors, thank you so much for passing by. And we're looking cool. forward to your show in a palestra. Yeah, man. As we Let's say. Yeah. It'll be good.